So let's just briefly discuss the pathophysiology of seizures. We keep, can keep this very simple and just say there might be too much excitation and too little inhibition. For the absorbed seizures that we just discussed, we know that there are very specific calcium channels involved, the so-called T-type calcium channels. T stands for tiny because they have a very tiny current, and also the idea is they sit in the thalamus and are very important for basal electrical activity. And the idea is that in absence seizures, you have too much activity in this T-type calcium channels. So how can we treat seizures? So generally, in terms of the mechanism of action of these drugs, it's all pretty predictable. So you can either decrease excitation and just try to have less signal propagation, and you can do so by just prolonging the inactivated state of the sodium channel. You probably remember that the sodium channel is cycling through these three stages, resting, activated, and then inactivated. And this inactivated state is this refractory period. So it has to go back to the resting state in order to be activated again. So it's obviously a very good idea to kind of prolong this inactivated state, this refractory period, in order to just slow down the sodium channel. And you can also imagine if a patient has a seizure that sodium channels are gonna be cycling very, very rapidly. So we're just gonna increase this refractory period for a little bit and therefore decrease signal propagation. Another possibility is just to decrease glutamatergic signaling as glutamate is our major excitatory neurotransmitter. Or we can just increase inhibition. We can increase GABAergic signaling as GABA is our major inhibitory neurotransmitter. The last option is blocking calcium T-type channels. And this is, again, very specific because we know that this T-type channels are involved in absent seizures. So we are only using these drugs that block calcium T-type channels to treat absent seizures. So here you can see a list with drugs to treat seizure disorders. And there are many more. These are just major examples. And here I have listed the predictable mechanism of actions that we just said in the previous slide. And what you can see here is that most of the drugs have a lot of different mechanisms of action. They do more than one thing. And that also makes it very difficult to categorize the anti-seizure medications because if you're just going to do it by mechanism of action, they all fall into more than one category. So I just want to point out a couple of things that everybody should know and recognize. So first of all, we said this, this blockade of calcium T-type channel is very specific, a very specific use in absence seizures because we have too much activity of this calcium T-type channels in absence seizures, so we want to block them. Therefore, if we want to treat absence seizures, we need to use one drug that also blocks the calcium T-type channel. And for example, there's etosuximide, which only blocks calcium T-type channels, or we have some more broad-spectrum drugs like valproic acid or lamotrigine that do many other things but also block the calcium T-type channels. So we can use them for treating absent seizures as well. And then you can see that there's a lot of other drugs that do other things. And generally, you can say whenever you have a different mechanism of action of calcium, then calcium T-type channel blockade, you can use it basically for any seizure type, except, of course, for the absence seizures, because here you need the calcium T-type channel blockade. And last, I would just remember the drugs like valproic acid and lamotrigine that do a lot of different actions, including the calcium T-type channel blockade. So you could use it for any seizure, including absence seizures. So these are our broad-spectrum anti-seizure medications. And we have actually only a very few anti-seizure medications that have just one mechanism of action. And those are medications that are highly board tested. So like phenytoin, carbamazepine, it's clear that they are prolonging the inactivated state of the sodium channel. Another example is itosuximide that we already discussed that is only a calcium T-type channel blocker. 